Here we have the uh, ImprovingClassicMotorcycles.com negative earth charge oil warning light kit with LED test fitted on the bike here. Uh, I have the green wire and we'll see that um, in a second is connected to the oil pressure sensor. So I've got that already run to here. I'm connecting that to the oil switch wire to the kit. This is the black box that comes with the device. Again, this is for a negative earth uh, bike, which this one is. We see here, this is the LED that would typically replace, uh, go into your headlight shell. Um, as we'll see in a little bit, I, I can't quite do that and have it functional. So we'll have to look for an option there. Right now I've got the power for this unit attached to my fuse panel. Uh, it's got a piggyback type <coughs> spade connector. Um, I've currently got it onto a hot switch going to my horn. Since I rarely ever use my horn, it should be okay. Instructions say that the, you should connect it directly to the ignition switch as that should be the cleanest power. Um, we'll see. I, this definitely works temporarily for me, so I may leave it for now. Uh, and try to figure out where to put that light where it's possibly visible while I'm riding. That should be an interesting situation on this bike. We've also got the a ground wire temporarily hooked up directly to the battery. So the black ring connector here on the kit uh, goes to your ground. In this case, obviously negative ground. And then when we turn on the switch, we expect two flashes and then steady flashing. Steady flashing indicating no oil pressure with the off bike. That sounds correct. And there's our two flashes and then our steady flashing. So at least statically, everything looks to be wired correctly. On this side, we can see the installation of the oil pressure switch here. You can see the switch is actually back behind, um, coming off of, and this is the rocker oil feed uh, that goes, there's a stainless steel braided line that goes up to the head. Um, so that's this junction. This one here is the oil pressure sensor. You can see the sensor back here. And then you can see the green wire that we connected the switch to on the other side. I just happened to have had a section of green wire with the right fittings on either end and approximately the right length. So I kind of lucked out there. Not that I couldn't have some, made something. We'll start the bike up uh, at some point here and confirm that this pressure sensor switch works. My semi-permanent uh, solution right now, again, is to pull the power off my fuse panel, connect up my oil pressure warning switch, uh, I've got a little bit of a loop here, and then it passes up underneath the tank. I've got the ground wire hooked up to my coil bracket here. This this ground uh, also this ground spot also supports the grounding for my headlight bucket, and then the control box for this device is up underneath the tank, in between the frame members there. Uh, that's also where I have my Boyer Branson box. So it's definitely should be out of the way. It says to put it somewhere waterproof, but the reality is I probably won't ride this bike too many times in the rain and actually under the tank is relatively dry. This is definitely not a touring bike of any sort. So next we'll look at where I've temporarily put the warning light. As you can see from this view, Putting a warning light of any sort in the headlight shell really won't do much good. Can't see anything up there. We'll have to find another spot for that uh, warning light. So until I can figure out a bracket mounting option, I've just zip tied the light to the fairing bracket. I think that'll work uh, fine temporarily. Now we can again test it out and we can see the startup flashes and then the steady rate of the no oil pressure.